is the magnificent ingenuity of the Californian Dawson uh, awake in uh, the recent um, L.A. Um, issue of uh, a breach in the peace uh, due to the um, Will Smith and uh, Chris Rock uh, incident. Um, I describe it... Uh, oh, oh, let me say one word first. Um, I think, uh, in principle, uh, it's genuinely... Uh, worthy that we should keep uh, questioning in contact with daily life, which means uh, political life, which means, uh, in Leo Strauss's phrase, um, uh, the life of the uh, citizen's understanding, the citizen's understanding, which is some, a phrase something like um, common sense, uh, remembering that common sense is not a uh, a notion that was always with us, as it were. Um, Aristotle uses that to describe the senses, like seeing and other things. But his word for uh, what we would call common sense is um, uh, endoxa, which means something like the experiences that people have had, say, um, in running a law court or whatever. I guess that's a, a specific example of doxa or experience. And um, every experience could be statable in the logos or in words on that view. Um, so you see um, Doxa being interrogated in the Politea or the Republic, for example, on uh, the issue of uh, justice or decay. But this could go for anything. It could go for anything that one learns from experience and then can state in the words, uh, which is a kind of knowledge but is considered to be not... Uh, Perfect. It's something one understands, but not something that one has um, a wise uh, understanding of. Um, it makes me think. When I just say that, it makes me think of this distinction in uh, death of a salesman between being liked and being well liked. So this is somehow a vast gap. Everything that went wrong for that man in death of the salesman was because he was merely liked, but he wasn't well liked. Um, that may be wrong to the uh, plot of Death of the Salesman. But anyway, you get the point. The difference between uh, mere knowledge, knowing how to uh, run a Starbucks, let's say, whatever it is, run a court, uh, the knowledge that the, the clerks have and the technicians have, compared to the knowledge that the, um, the theorist has, that the doctor of jurisprudence has, that the philosopher has, that Montesquieu has, is um, conceived as a very vast uh, difference. And so then we get this difference between the political man and what politics can understand, and then the theorists, the thinkers, uh, ultimately um, Heidegger. Um, and so I think that we should try to endeavor to keep contact between these two regions, between the Dasman and Heidegger's view, which is like the political man, the everyday man, the uh, citizen's understanding in Strauss sense, and then this uh, Eigenlichkeit, this, this uh, uh, being that is gripped by its own problems and genuinely thinks through the problems and doesn't just repeat what's remembered by um, his society. Uh, so we have, in this case, a case which you could bring to the limit of that uh, immediately by pointing out, here we have a case which uh, everybody saw it, it's on video, it's basically clear uh, what happened. Uh, some Somebody could make it, uh, you know, there could be cynical questions, like is it staged? Uh, was there something wrong with it? But mo I think in general, most people hold it that um, uh, Will Smith got up on the stage and uh, slapped Chris Rock, who was a presenter of this um, uh, Oscars show. And uh, then there's a question of um, whether the L.A. County should immediately arrest him. Uh, uh, there's some little legal technicalities in there. Um, some people say the uh, technicalities are the whole of the law, so we shouldn't just say legal technicalities, but there's some legal issues in there. So um, it was raised that since 
Chris Rocket said he's not going to press charges, then does that just make the whole thing defunct? So uh, no, in the sense that Chris Rock is one uh, member of the public among all the members of the public, he pluribus unum, as it were, um, so that the district attorney to bring the case on the basis that uh, the public has been assaulted. It doesn't, um, this, it's, not, it's not this positive that um, the person involved doesn't want to press charges, right? There's, a, there's still the, uh, another issue. But on the other side, as soon as we uh, go beyond the common uh, scuttlebutt, as it were, but it's still part of the common scuttlebutt, we go a little bit higher to what would be commonly said is, uh, and we're still in the political region, we say, okay, you have um, a body of laws and you have Supreme Court cases and there's an issue called free speech and there's a First Amendment, and then uh, what are the standards? And so then uh, one of the standards from 1942, which has ever been modified uh, by subsequent um, uh, Supreme Court precedents, especially during the 60s, um, where uh, what counts as... Uh, expletives, what counts as, um, uh, what would be the word, um, uh, words which are uh, profane and offensive because they're profane, uh, somehow profaning God and things like this were still in the 1942 fighting uh, words case, which I want to bring because it's so simple in terms of its common sense um, uh, palpableness or, or just straightforwardness. Um, it seems cogent, which is that standard, it lists a number of things which are supposedly um, have been clear um, exemptions from free speech, including uh, libel, including um, uh, giving uh, secrets to the enemy. They don't say that one, but um, in, uh, including uh, a number of um, annoying, uh, the case was brought on a standard which was then clarified in the president, but the president goes towards the final uh, part where it says uh, words, something to the effect of words which are um, likely to uh, bring about an immediate uh, reaction from the immediate violent breach of the peace um, just on uttering, and that these words are relatively, these words or these subjects are relatively well known. Um, so I think that is the most obvious way of framing the case. Uh, other ways of framing it could be brought, and that's part of the issue with the California, with the, um, you have the Tucker Carlson side, you have a, um, uh, a Trumper side, uh, which is would be more towards um, um, total, he speaks of total free speech. But, in, uh, but what's the other side first briefly is that you, it seemed to me what happened was that uh, Will Smith was smiling, and maybe he was just putting on that smile. But then, probably what happened it didn't is that uh, you could see it in the videotape. I didn't see him actually look over to his wife, but it looked like she was visibly upset, and so maybe that kind of flipped. And here you have somebody um, in a, a already emotionally fraught moment. Uh, mocking a serious illness. So it seems like it falls within the fighting words area of the law. Um, and then he actually was uh, uh, driven, as it were, by instinct to um, breach the peace. So then the question is whether this is sort of a, re a reasonable case and then you get the argument, I think, would be on the one side, uh, the question is, you must have ultimate free speech. This is getting to be the point that's constantly being pushed. All of free speech is the ultimate uh, of, of, of the um, rights, which, can't, which are totally unabridgeable, and um, we can't be alienated from them on any circumstance. We ought to have the total laboratory of uh, free speech, which is one point. So, but... As soon as they admit something like that, that it's one point, it's as though we were lifting up into the realm of the dead or into philosophy or somewhere else. Because in the ordinary way of thinking, we ought to have a, either we're wishy-washy and um, uh, somehow uh, 
or, or, or just giving in to the thing is like a cop out, or we ought to have a view about it. And uh, in the realm where we ought to have a view about it, it, it I, I suppose my view would be um, what I just stated, which is that this seems like a reasonable uh, case of uh, breach of the peace due to a serious insult. But then you could say, and, but then I think I, that side of the argument should add from the political point of view what the strongest argument would be is, is there really anything um, worthy in uh, insults to people's serious illness uh, so far as we're talking about political speech? Isn't the freedom of speech essentially about political speech and about being able to put forward serious views about um, the uh, fate of the country? Is there really anything in uh, this kind of um, insult of serious illness in uh, already uh, sort of heated up um, uh, emotional situations uh, that really we should argue that it ought to be protected? Um, I think it kind of, that kind of ex almost exhausts the, um, the realm in which we can argue this from a political point of view. But then once we go further, sort of to Dorkins or so, say um, the legal scholar Dorkins who talks about is there truth in interpretation, we can then kind of almost touch uh, Nietzsche's views immediately. So there's a couple of forms of how to think about this which might, be represent, which might uh, represent themselves in um, Republicans and Democrats, let's say, or in Trumpers and uh, Democrats. I know there's all kinds of, um, almost hundreds of uh, little splinters radiating out from those groups now, different Bernie Sanders people and uh, whatever it may be, or people that are uh, neoconservatives rather than Trumpers, people that are uh, with Romney, whatever it is. Um, but uh, those views represented as a form of view and big, two big, just those two big views, which would be like what Nietzsche calls forms of life or what uh, in Hegel is part of the zeitgeist and part of the, um, as it were, output of the country. It's um, probably worth noting in passing that, that this, as a zeitgeist question, I would say these questions are worth looking into uh, for the whole world, not just for America, right? questions of uh, the Supreme Court of the United States, because the, the principles of law are, are principles which in some way can be um, gainfully thought through for the whole world, not just for America. Um, in this way, the America is producing in its zeitgeist things that speak to the world and not just to uh, North America, which is interesting in itself. Uh, Dworkin says the standard of truth and interpretation is that the person... Uh, believe in what they're saying. So if we exclude all the cases where there, we suspect lying or we suspect uh, some kind of uh, total defect of the intelligence or something else, um, but only take, take them to be too sincere blocks, too sincere views being expressed, given expression to by the people, then uh, we have this situation where both sides are kind of locked into actually genuinely believing what they're saying. And then if they get distance, then you get this Nietzschean level. Then you get this level of the claim that, look, I know that I only have this view because I was born in a certain time and place. If I was born somewhere else, if I lived under Xerxes, it would have never occurred to me. And also, I can see that these views are changing. They were different in 1942. They were different in 1842. Uh, we can see that there um, some kind of uh, evolution is going on, if not um, in the law itself, in the uh, uh, life of the people, as it were. Um, once we get to views like that, we get towards this uh, Nietzschean life-giving lie notion. We get into philosophical notions. And these notions then, as it were, um, people uh, get to know those notions somehow, whether it's because uh, somebody's in a cafe where there's two academics talking and they overhear them, whether it's because they have a relative who's an academic or um, a college student, However it is, they get to know those views, and those views begin um, to have a power in decision-making about the law, which is hair shaft, which is um, domination by the violence as represented by the state. So these views about the law then become views about um, 
how uh, one should live um, so far as one's actions are controllable by physical violence of the state. Um, so I think that shows how from Nietzsche we can get into this general region um, more uh, exact points could be brought out there if anybody wants to uh, put write some questions into the um, our possible discussion points into the comments that would be um, of some help we could also try to go a step further and bring it over into a Heideggerian uh, look uh, and also I think it shed some light on the concept of historicism of seeing everything from the point of view of uh, um, evolving uh, system, if you like.